say former Muslim, former ex Muslim. Muslim. You know? <laughs> yes, Ron. And um, he's, his story was awesome. We've had him on before, but we never got to the part where he gave his heart to the Lord. We got real mm. close to it and we talked after it. But we need to happen. What happened? Yeah, we talked yeah. about dating Jesus mm -hmm. and uh -huh. then being, mm -hmm. you know, and engaged and never talked about getting married. Getting married, In no. my heart. In your heart. <laughs> I always yeah. tell people, you know what, it's okay. Let people date Jesus. <laughs> Let people date you Jesus. Know, meaning that you introduce Jesus to them and they don't have to say, I'm going to marry or, you know, I'm in my heart to Jesus. Mm. Let them date Jesus. That's what I did. I kind of dated him. You know, in my heart. You know, people, they know what I mean. For three years. You know, there are people maybe not didn't hear your first story. And he is from Iran, raised there, and wanted to know God, wanted to be a friend of God, Allah. Yeah, I didn't know any other God. And it's the only God you knew. <laughs> yes. And um, you kept seeking after him, and finally you gave up on him. I gave up. I could not stop thinking about him for a second. Mm. And I al always marveled. I said, I was Muslim. I said, why can't I shut this down and mm. stop thinking about him for a second? I couldn't. Mm. Until, as I said, I met Jesus in, when people say, met Jesus? Yeah. I, I, you know, in a vision he came and mm. in Cyprus in a hotel room. And even after that, I didn't believe he was the son of God because mm. he didn't give me that understanding. Mm until I prayed that prayer, Jesus, I don't believe you're the son of God, but if you are, I give you my heart. Mm -hmm. And I always tell our friends that it's not just this magical prayer that you pray and this magical person appears to you. Mm. It has to be from the depth of your heart mm -hmm. because we might be able to deceive some people. We can't deceive God. No. And when you pray, it better be real. It doesn't yes. have to be polished. It doesn't have to be religious. It has to be very real. And that was a real moment in my life. Jesus, I really don't believe you're the Son of God, but if you are really, I invite you to come to my heart. Mm. And after that, I got invited to a church, as I said, in Atlanta. The first time I walked into a church, I didn't have any picture of the church. This is, may sound funny. The only picture of the church I had, it was from watching Godfather movie them killing the yes <laughs> them just going and killing people and shooting and then go to church and, and do this and then they go back and church then and i said and kill you know some what? more yes that was like an idea of like oh this is church and this is christianity they can go sin and then they can just go and ask for forgiveness that was my mm. mindset mm. you know it's yeah, it's laughable you but, yo, yeah. because i got but now later on i met the real god the father you know and I, I went to church and with having no understanding about the church, I sit in a very back row and all I could feel, and it was highlighted to me, it wasn't preaching, it wasn't anything, it was this peace that was all over me. Mm. The second time when I got invited, I said, there is a peace there, I want to go there. Mm. And I went there. And the third time I got invited by Christians, they invited me, right? And they loved me, but they invited me. I trusted them enough to go there. But by this time, this is what I said to my heart. Even if you guys didn't invite me, I wanted to go because I got addicted to the peace that is in that church. Mm. I go there that day, and I was late. I got lost, and this is the year 2000. I got late, and I walk in. This is a very large church, and the usher gently takes my hand and ushers me to the very first row of the church. <laughs> it wasn't Even a Baptist church now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Even when you're it's late. a church that they love Jesus Christ. People ask me, are you Baptist, are you Methodist, what are you? I say, I love Jesus. And That's yes. what I am. That's what you That's are. That's what we are. And I go there and I sit in the very first row and I'm very uncomfortable. This is what I said. I'm s sitting between all these Christians. What, what am I doing here in the first row of the church? And after a while, you know, pastor was preaching with fire and he was walking back and forth. And all of a sudden, I see the atmosphere got very thick. I could see it and I knew it was 12 feet deep. I knew wow. this is very thick. And I, I knew I, I could go to a certain place and touch it. That never happened to mm -hmm. me. I believe it was anointing. And after a while, I'm looking at it and I see a man standing behind the pastor. 
with the rod in his hand, and the rod was like this, and he's looking at me. And when the pastor was walking, you know, preaching with mm -hmm. fire, and that man started to walk in the opposite way. And that really got my attention. I said, who is that? A voice very loud inside my heart said, it's Jesus. And then I heard another voice, the opposite, mocking voice. I said, huh, that's not Jesus. You just see stuff. I said, I went with the mocking voice. I said, yeah, I think I just saw something. That's not Jesus. Remember, I prayed that prayer before. I said, Jesus, if you're the son of God, I give you my heart. And this is what happened. I saw him walked on the stage, walked on air. Jesus doesn't only walk on water. He walks yes. on air too. <laughs> yes. And then he just came down and he just walked inside my body. I'm sitting there and I just, just saw him. He just walked in. He just walked in. That's what he does, even if you don't see it, mm. when you give your heart to Jesus, when he, yes, comes, in, he comes in. He has to walk in. Yeah. He doesn't just go through my uh -uh. ear. You know, he just walks in. The person goes inside, abide in me and I in you. Mm. It wasn't a special th treat for me. I think in my case, he allowed me to see what happens mm. when you give your heart to him. Because yeah. you sought him so long, since 12 years old. Yes. I didn't know it was him. No. But yes, he actually, I wouldn't do it if he didn't give me the desire. Yeah. It was a desire. Like when you're mm -hmm. hungry, what are you going to do? You're going to go find some food. Find some food. And, you know, I can't get credit because of my hunger, because hunger mm -hmm. came. Uh -huh. And maybe, the, yeah, the pursuit comes because mm -hmm. you're hungry. And I sit there. See, I've never been in church, actually, twice before. I didn't know about the fire. I didn't know about Holy Spirit. I didn't mm -hmm. know about the shaking. I didn't know about falling, I didn't know about demon, I don't know any of these. But what happened when he walked in and my eyes got closed and I saw his hand from here and touched, exactly like that, touched my hand, like lighting a candle. The moment he did it, mm. fire was everywhere from my heart, it spread it everywhere. My eyes is closed and the fire goes everywhere and I started to cry and then I started to weep. Mm. And then I'm shaking, I can't control myself. and. It was the most amazing feeling or embrace from like being getting really hugged by God. Mm -hmm. And I knew this is happening here. Mm -hmm. And I got a little bit uncomfortable because I'm shaking, I'm crying, I don't want anybody to see me. Mm -hmm. And then after a while that I enjoyed it, I said, please stop this. Then I said, come back later. Come back like, later. Come back later. The moment I said this, the shaking, the feeling, the fire, everything is stopped less than a second. It's like you hit the break. That really surprised me that how can this amazing feeling stop in less than a second? I was like, oh Lord God, I don't know what just happened. My friend came, to, two of my friends, they came and I told them I was so excited. I said, tell me what was that fire? They said, Holy Spirit. My English wasn't good. I said, what is Holy Spirit? They said, you know God? I said, mm. yes. Spirit of God, then I said, Ruh Allah, because we mm -hmm. say, I said, you're telling me a spirit of God Almighty came to my body and that mm. was a fire mm. for, a, for a Muslim. That's blasphemy. God would mm. never get close to you, mm. ever. And him walking inside you. The moment I went to open my mouth and say, no, my whole body, I remember, stopped me and said, nope, it was. I said, <gasps> You're right, the Spirit of God came to me. They were so excited, they said, now do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? I said, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Good gracious. What they a said, story. why not? I said, now I know. I had to be honest. Yeah. I would say God is truth and He loves yes. honesty. Yes. I said, now I believe Jesus is alive. Mm. One, mm. He came to me. Two, now I believe that His blood has power to forgive my sin. Otherwise, Holy Spirit wouldn't walk inside mm -hmm. me. Mm. However, if he's the son of God, he has to show me himself. Mm. They said, okay. okay, you know, fair enough. And I remember for two or three weeks driving in Atlanta and going to work and I was weeping and weeping. But this time it was good because I got connected. <laughs> I knew heaven can hear me. And I knew this Jesus, I talked to him. And I, uh, I said, how about my friends? How about my family? This is so good. Mm. Mm. I want them to have it, you know. Yeah. I was working for a vending company that we would just go in the morning and get all the snack and then go all over Atlanta and mm. fill all these 
vending machine. Vending machine because mm. my father had supermarket. I was good at it. And I had hours to travel. Mm. And I can't tell you how good it felt for the first time to be connected, you know. Mm. Since I was 12, I wanted to be connected and mm. be connected, you know. And it, it was the most amazing, you know, you connection. You wanted him to be a, what to a, be a friend. Yes, what and a especially it felt good because I was so thirsty, mm. yeah. you know, for so long. And, mm. and it, it's like winning the lottery cannot even compare it. It's mm. like I, I hit the jackpot in <laughs> heaven. It's like yeah. this really happened. I wasn't crazy since I was 12. I knew this will happen. It's happened. And then they told me about the prophetic. I said, what is prophetic? They said, there are people that they can hear God. I said, stop, stop. You're saying people can hear from, not Jesus, God Almighty. I said, God Almighty? They said, yes. I said, I beg you, take me to them. Anyway, they said, there is a Friday service in another church in Atlanta, a smaller church. They said, we have to go Friday. I said, I can't wait. Can you call them? I said, no, we have to go Friday. <laughs> I couldn't wait to meet people that they can hear God Almighty, you know. And now we just say, you know, the Lord told this to my heart. The Lord told me that. And there are people that you're in agony and they can't believe it. That God Almighty would take a time and talk to you. He doesn't have other things mm -hmm. to do, maybe holier thing to do. And he would talk to you as a person. Why would he be, be interested in me? Mm -hmm. What did I do? What did I do for him? <laughs> and that's what happened on January 21st, 2000, Friday night. We went to that church and it was a, they had a very strong gift of prophecy and six or seven people at the end of the service, it was 10, 30 or 11, mm. they got together, they would walk around the crowd, among the crowd, and they would just, by impression, would say, you, sir, can we pray for you? Yes. Then they would record it and at the end give you the tape. I counted one person, two person, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was the eighth person. Mm. And when they started New to beginnings. walk toward me, I knew my life is going to change. Very short lady, would you stand up? Yes. What's your name? Cameron. I'm six, seven, and she's maybe five, one, <laughs> five, two. She's looking at me. She said, I remember so clear. She said, can I, the Lord told me to touch your hand. And my heart was beating so fast. The Lord talk to you about me and, and, and she touched my hand just like that the moment she did it I had to turn my face around because I, something inside me was terrified of something that she carried and I was so terrified and I put my hand like this and this is what she said she said I tell you accusing a spirit to loose this man right now mm. my English wasn't mm. good I didn't know accusing a spirit mm. whatever she said I fell on the floor I had no energy, I just fell. I never saw people falling before. I'm on the floor, my eyes is closed, and I saw this tornado, very dark, inside my stomach. And when I got here, I started to scream very loud. Mm. While I'm on the floor, I'm saying to myself, there is something else lives inside me. They don't want to go, they have to go, and they're using my throat to scream, and it was very uncomfortable. And then they were gone, I could see it. When the last drop left, my eyes were closed. I saw very far into heaven, just like this. I just saw very far with my eyes closed. I saw Jesus standing in the right side of a throne. Mm. It was a wooden chair, and I knew it's a throne. And he poured, the moment I saw him, he poured this milky spirit that came from heaven. And the moment he came and touched me, it's like this atomic bomb went off inside me. What and a story. My whole body knew he was the Son of God. My whole body, when I say my body, I could feel my eyelashes, eyebrows, my fingernail, they were all talking to me. That was the first time I realized my whole body is alive. It's not my tongue that can talk. My whole body was saying that it was him all along. Mm. You know, since I was 12 years old, it was him all along. It's like this love song. It's like my body was just singing this love song. And I was just going back all the Gee, way to wish. 12 years old that none of those moments was wasted. It was him that mm -hmm. he pursued me. Yeah. And I knew he was the son of God. I knew he was God. I, it's like I had no doubt, you know, because of his grace when he touched me. Of course, I went down as a Muslim. When I got up, I got up as an atomic bomb. Uh, for Christ Jesus <laughs> and Lord God I had so much fire in my hand and that that's where you know I started to after six months I started to calling back home and of course that fire I had and that assurance I had I would just talk to anybody 
uh, the Lord would tell me, lay your hand on the phone. I didn't know these things. I would lay my hand on the phone. And in Iran, people would f get slain in spirit, you know. <laughs> and that, that, that's kind of a short version of my walk with Christ until I got saved. And so many things <laughs> happened. And, you know, I got to know Jesus very deeply in the beginning. But I didn't know the Father at all. I knew he as a father. I knew, I knew Father is God, and I knew Holy Spirit. But then later on, the Lord put it in my heart, now I'm going to show you the Father. That's where my journey started, to travel inside the heart of the Father and get to know mm. his heart. You know, mm. Mm. I need you to come back for two hours. I need mm. you to sit here for two hours wow. and do your whole story. Wow. Because there are a lot of Muslim viewers. We have them. And mm. I really want you to talk to them. Boy, I really want you to story. reach out to them because, you know, they're just deceived. They don't know. Mm. They know he was raised in Iran. He didn't know. No. He just had a drawing at 12 years old to be the friend of God. Yeah. And bring your wife. She can sing. And yeah. I just want you both to come for a whole day. Great invitation. Yes. And it would yes. be yes. Wonderful, wonder. Would you like to have him come back? Just All let right. us know because yes. I'll tell you what, what a blessing you are. Thank you. And I, you're so articulate too. Yeah. He and has a message. It's a, it's Jesus like even the Christians should know him. And yeah. a lot of Christians you know, don't Dorothy, know him like that. You know, that's what I was thinking. That's, that's I was thinking, here's heart. a Muslim I'm listening to that's giving this story and the Christian people <laughs> That is they don't my even heart. understand this. I always say that my heart is more for the church than is for yeah. Muslims uh -huh. because the Lord gave it to me. Yeah. And this message of friendship with the Father, we think Muslims need the Father, but we need to understand, I need to understand every day. I need the Father as much as they need uh -huh. the Father. And I, it's like I need to, because the Father, if you go even all the way back to Old Testament, he is deep love and he is really, yes, one of the things he did, he saved everybody. But sometimes we bring him low and we call him a savior, meaning that you're not more than a savior. You're only a savior, wow. like somebody that saved you. He's way more than a savior, yes. you know. And even we call him a father. Yes, he's father and he's more than a father. And for me, my desire is for all of us to take time every single day and just say, Father, I want to walk with you. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to go share you. I want to share you with other people. I want to go great commission. I always say great commission is not the greatest commission. Your greatest commission is to really get to know God and love that's God. That's what he wants. Yes. And that's the daily process. How can I love you and ignore you? Yeah. How can I love you, you and ignore yeah. you? you it, it's a, the greatest calling, if we could all hear it as a Christian, yeah. this is not even for Muslim, is to walk with God. Enoch walked with him and was no and was more. Not. And to me, the way I understand, doesn't have to do anything with good works. Uh, no. It has to do with walking with God, meaning the Father desires you so much and misses you daily that he has to have his time with you. Yes. You know? And that, when that foundation is there, we will make the Jew and the Muslim and everybody so jealous because you walk with God and you smell mm. like God. Mm. And everybody, when they smell him, mm -hmm. they want him. But if they smell religion, they want to run away. Yeah, that's exactly you know? right. I want <laughs> him to come back. Right. I Boy, just want what him to come a, back. What and a I message think you have. Hashem, you know. Powerful, powerful wow. it's message. It's the Father. It's a, maybe we could just now and just tell the Father, even the Christians, you know, just tell the Father how much you love him and tell the Father that I want to commit my life walking with you mm -hmm. before I just go out and share with share you with others because yeah. I have to have this story with the father you know all of us yes. all of us I always say we as a Christian is good to get to our knees and say father I missed you we missed you yeah. and we want you we ask that you forgive us that we've been working for you for so long and neglecting you. And neglecting we, we, we want you father you know please take us back yeah. you know he yeah. um, one time I had missed a couple days. I don't like my first morning, part of my morning, I give to him. I missed a couple of days and I went in there the, the next time and he says, I've missed you. Mm. Plainest mm. day, I've missed you. And it just put a thing in my heart. Like, Amen. I missed him. Yeah. My favorite well, thing to do is sit there and just spend that mm. time with mm. him. Mm. I love doing Quiet it. Time. That's so awesome. And also in my life, I had to, this is very important. I had to, understand this over and over again that 
he has to be number one in my life. He has to be. If my evangelism is number one and he's number two, even if I spend time with him, it's not going to do because he knows he's number two now. He has to be number one all the time. And when he knows he's number one, even if I spend one minute and sit down with him, that's enough because he knows. He is the greatest desire in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then I have all other desires, and which is wonderful. He is the beginning and the end. The moment as a Christian we put him in a second place, everything about our life will mm -hmm. become what uncomfortable. A story. What a story. He what has story. to be number one. <laughs> Just remember, well. we have two billion Christians on earth. Mm -hmm. If two billion people fall in love with God and say to him, you are number one, what's going to happen? The yeah. whole world will say, we want him. Mm. Because yeah. two billion people smell like him. Mm. Yeah. Smell like that deep love. But he has to be mm. number mm. one. Wow, boy, boy wow. you've inspired I wish, me. <laughs> I wish we didn't wow. have to go. We have to go, but... Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank totally. you. Please come back. Yes, absolutely. Because we desperately need And you don't live that far away. You can't come back. So yes, yes. we yes. Bring your wife with you. Yes. Do some singing yes. too. Thank you, Lord. Right. Lord, thank you for bringing you, him Amen. into our lives, Father. Yes. I thank you that people's lives will be eternally changed yes. by the words they heard here today. In Jesus' name, we thank Amen. you. Thank you Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to...